Well, hello, hello, hello. Thanks for having me. My name is John Bromley, and I'm here to talk about charity. Charity's really all I do. It's all I think about. I'm a professional charity guy. I don't really align myself with any one cause necessarily, uh, except to the extent maybe that the advancement of charity itself is a cause. What I do do is I eat, sleep, and breathe the facilitation of charity. Kind of weird, right? Most of my friends, they think I'm a spy. <laughs> But when it comes to the strategy on structure, what's charity, what's not, financing, compliance, technology, news, views, opinions, provocation, relating to the pursuit of benevolence, that's my gig, and I love it. Now, charity, you say, eh? Do you recognize charity when you see it? I mean, this building, for example, the symphony plays here. That's charitable. What else? What are you passionate about? Think about that for a second. Preservation of the outdoors, art, education, faith, health, inequity, the relief of poverty. Well, there's a pretty good chance that what you're thinking is charitable. And if not at law, then in spirit. That's because charity is everywhere. It surrounds us. It exists in our communities in one form or another. We interact with it multiple times a week, whether we recognize it or not. It's possible that some of us here might work for a charitable entity and not know it. See, charity, it's massive. It's a major part of our economy. But I'm not here today to explain charity. Rather, I'm here to raise some concerns I have about it. And these mostly relate to the state of giving. You see, I'm troubled. Well, where I'm troubled, I'm troubled a little bit by when, why, and how most of us give today. I believe we all have an innate charitable spirit, so we're all charitable at one level or another. But I'm concerned that our charitable spirit's getting bogged down by the constant commotion related to fundraising. And so, distracted from focus and purpose, more and more of us are showing symptoms of what I call charitable ADD and or donor fatigue. Now, it's not at all too late to intervene. You see, frustration, despite the fact that frustration with charity can at times be real and tangible. So I'm here really just to provoke a conversation about our relationship to giving. And let's do this while we're still a really giving society, because we are, we're very generous. I also believe that prevention is a good treatment, uh, so I want to share with you a solution that I'm working on to deal with the future realities of giving. Charity is just far too essential to, to our society, and giving too important to us as people, to our characters, our souls, for us not to talk it out a little bit. Let me ask you a question. Think about your last gifts to charity. Okay, what stimulated those? Your last gift, the gift before that, the gift before that. If you can still remember the gifts before that, the ones before that. Well, if the stats are true, okay, if what the polls tell us are right, most of us here only give when we're asked. That's right. Most of us only give when we're asked. So what does that mean? Well, I'd say that as a society, our connection to charity is mainly driven by fundraising. Can we call it a fundraising-driven charity paradigm? Well, I think it's fair to say that, if not so. Let's consider some indicators. 60% of all donations go to 1% of charities. So 99% of charities are bad, right? Or 1% of charities are good at asking, and they do it a lot. I mean, think about your own experience. What do you see? Gala for this, party for that, a ride for this, a run for that. Charitable mustache season, right? It's coming up. <laughs> so our friends are getting involved in things a little bit more, and that's cool. But, you know, what's a little arm twisting between friends? You donate to mine, I'll donate to yours. Charities need money. Fundraising's how they get it. In fact, I'd argue that fundraising is more critical today than in the past because many of us don't give otherwise. Today, less of us give as a matter of convention, habit, belief. 
You see, giving's emphasized by all major religions, right? Almost all of them. But in an increasingly secularized society, less of us are practicing religion, and practicing religion is what's important. And so there's less occasion for us to learn and spread the values of giving for giving's sake alone. I mean, where do you learn about giving? So almost everything is just about asking. Fundraising is this kind of stimulant that has replaced visceral giving. Now, charities in society owe fundraising a major debt of gratitude for picking up the slack. So what's the problem? <laughs> well, I think it's simple. Fundraising works. What's the problem with that? Well, fundraisers know fundraising works. And so they ask more. And this is where the problems start to appear. I mean, consider, for example, what's going to happen as fundraising gets to know the internet better. You ever heard of that? The World Wide Web, right? See, because of the web, the cost and participation barriers to fundraising are going to plummet. They're going to, like, go down to near zero. Now, while that's a great thing on many levels, that's not what I'm here today to talk about. Maybe I can come back another time. What I'm here to talk about, I'm here to talk to donors, I'm here to talk to people who give, and those of you who don't. Because any way about it, I'm saying, brace yourselves for more asking. A lot more asking. And don't hold out hope that fundraising is going to dissipate. Instead, I'm saying, think about how you're going to deal with it. Now, before considering some form of solution, let's consider, or let's analyze a little bit, any gift to charity. Okay, in my view, there's two parts to every thoughtfully made gift. Number one, the act of giving. This is parting with your money, right? Deciding to spend it on something other than yourselves. Number two, the impact from giving. In a charitable context, which charity am I going to choose? Why? What's its intended result? What does it have to do with what I think is rad or what I want to change? So now in this increasingly noisy fundraising-driven paradigm, do we take the time to equally weigh the act of giving and the impact from giving? Huh? Do we do that when we donate? <laughs> I'm afraid most of us don't. We're generally reactive donors. We dole out money, a gift here, a gift there, right? Oh, she came to my birthday, I better give to her. That's my boss, I'll give devil. <laughs> that guy's red pants are so ridiculous, I'm not giving anything to him. <laughs> okay, that kind of stuff is what I call charitable ADD. Are we going to keep giving if it's like this? I mean, can you look back at your last year of giving and say anything other than you gave and that that's great? Do you know really what you changed? How do you feel about it? I'm not even talking about what the charities have done with the money. I'm talking about you. I think there's got to be a better way. So is there a giving model that enables more thoughtful giving? Well, we learned earlier that 1% of charities uh, take in the vast majority of money, but that's because they're good at fundraising, right? Is there a 1% of donors out there? Can we occupy that? How do they give? Well. The most wealthy and or well-advised donors give using what's called the private foundation. Well, what's that? It's effectively like having your own charity. It enables you to donate first to your own account and then decide later how you're going to use that money, to what end, to what cause. So if you had your own foundation, just like Bill Gates, okay, maybe a few less zeros on the end, what would your uh, relationship to charity look like? And if you had given this way just since you were a little wee guy or gal, you think you'd be a different donor today? I, I work with a ton, of the, a ton of private foundations, okay? We create a lot of them. My experience says you'd have a different relationship to charity, and it'd be better. You'd be more thoughtful, composed. You'd plan more. You'd focus your giving. 
at the end of the day, you end up creating way more charitable impact. But you can't just go out there and create your own foundation, can you? Well, no, I mean, you could come see me and you know, start a corporation, make sure it's got no share capital. You probably know that as a not-for-profit, get it registered as a charity, yada, 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 yada. Well, that kind of bothered me. I mean, why is it that only those of us with the most can give sort of the most strategically, as I call it, right? Where you can separate the act of giving from the impact from giving. Well, remember the web? We talked about that earlier. When you look at the web, a lot of, that, a lot of disruption comes from there. And when you look into that, you see that the tools of the few, okay, web disruption often comes from when the tools of the few are made available to the masses. And in charity land, this translates into everyone getting their own foundation. It's empowering to give this way. You're in charge. You're in control. Technology doesn't disrupt, but empowered donors will disrupt te technology. Or sorry, empowered donors will disrupt charity. And I think that's important. So I started something called CHIMP, okay? What's that? Well, you take charitable and impact, you mash them together, drop some letters, and you get CHIMP. What is CHIMP? Okay. Well, it's a charitable bank for donors that anyone can have an account with. Your account acts like your own foundation. So before something like this, you had really no choice but to give directly to an asking charity. Now, you can give money anytime, anywhere, acting in reaction to any stimulus, and you'll be tax receipted right away. So with your own foundation, when and why would you donate? Reaction to a natural disaster, in memory of a loved one, a pay raise, walking past a homeless person, waking up on a rainy day with a roof over your head. I mean, we're all grateful for some form of plenty. So now you've got money in your account, right? Your, your foundation's got some dough in it. Pause. Chill out. Take some time to think about how to best create impact. Use your time to find and learn about charities. In our context in CHIMP, all charities are there, and you can find information about them all. Revenues, expenses, how much they spend on fundraising, <gasps> how many employees they have. Why, this is, why we do this is because we want to help you determine, start to determine what you think a good charity is. Okay? It's not about what I think although I may have some opinions on that, it's really about you. So you've decided. Send the money directly to them from your account. Write them a note if you've got something to say. Remain anonymous if you want to stay off donor lists, save some room in your recycling bin. Maybe you're just that mysterious. When you give to and from one place, you'll always know where, when, and why you've given. And this is something we can all learn, a, learn from. It's important to know what you've done. So I'd say, chimp, what we're trying to do with it, I'd say we aspire to tool a donor-empowered paradigm, one where fundraising then helps us discover and learn about charities, and it reports to us on how money is used. We want dinner, donors to give thoughtfully and purposefully, you know, from this walled garden, free of pressure. There may be lots of pandemonium noise out and about, where you give based on the merit of the charity and not just because they're good at asking. Creating charitable impact has to be the ultimate goal. Now, if you guys can do one thing for me today, I'd say I want you to rethink when, why, and how you give. Can you do that for me? Can you rethink when, why, and how you give? When I look at my own friends and, I, you know, the, and the general public, I say, God, we need to reawaken our charitable spirits. We need to rediscover giving. So in my world, I'd say, hey, just drop some dough on your foundation you know, here and there. Start giving, man. 
find a charitable rhythm that works for you. I can tell you one thing for sure. There's no doubt that fundraisers in, in all contexts will compete aggressively for your money. So start thinking about what your foundation will stand for and why. What legacy of change you want to leave behind. Start to think about what your foundation would do. Thanks.